please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us proceed forward now for the introductory rituals of this funeral mass, and you may enter into the pew and remain standing. waters of baptism, Ricky died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. We spread this funeral pall now. Its white color is a symbol of our hope in the new life of Christ. And the violet color of these vestments symbolizes prayer and purification and preparation for entering into everlasting life. Please remain standing now for our entrance hymn.
faith professes that your son died and rose again, mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Ricky, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for our first reading. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. 
For we know that if our earthly dwelling intent to be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, but eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I welcome you here to Immaculate Conception for this funeral mass for Ricky. Um, my name is Father Hardesty. I've been the pastor here at Immaculate Conception and also at St. Catherine in New Haven and St. Vincent de Paul in New Hope for six years now. And uh, it's an honor of mine to share this time of prayer with you for Ricky. I think this is really when our community is at its best, when it rallies around those who are grieving. And so I'm very proud of our community. I'm proud of you and just very honored to be with you this morning to pray with you for Ricky. Um, if I can do anything for you in an ongoing way, please let me know. I want to support you not only during this official time of prayer, but in, a, in an ongoing way. The uh, that first reading that we had this morning, I think is so encouraging, especially on a day like this where we're grieving the death of Ricky. Uh, the prophet Isaiah is trying to console and encourage the Israelites during their uh, exile. 
They've been undergoing so much persecution. All the time, the Israelites are being persecuted. And so Isaiah is trying to lift up their hearts to imagine the day when the Messiah comes, when the Savior comes, and they will have peace, they will be restored, they will be provided for, they will be lifted up. He says, the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. What an encouraging thing to say to the Israelites, for, for them to imagine in their prayer that God himself is coming to them in their persecution, in their sorrow, and, and wiping their face, wiping the tears from their faces. Such an intimate, um, personal, family type of image. And uh, we believe that God the Father does the same for you this morning. In your heart, in the depth of your prayer, as you're pouring out your heart to God, in your sorrow at the death of Ricky, God the Father comes to you and he just holds your face and he wipes away your tears. What a very encouraging thing to, to think about. That's what we call imaginative prayer. When you spend some time in prayer, just imagining yourself in the scenes of the Bible, right? Imagine yourself as one of those Israelites in exile and persecution, and God the Father coming and just wiping your face. It's a beautiful image, very encouraging, and it helps, it helps our hearts to stay buoyed on the surface of sorrow rather than sinking down below. Uh, the second reading is also very insightful. Uh, Paul, Paul says something that's only really possible for Christians. He says something that's only really possible in the life of one who is faithful. Um, he says this beautiful thing. He says, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. That's very interesting. It's as, as we grow older, as our bodies weaken, he says in the life of a Christian, as the body decreases, the soul increases. As the body decreases, the soul increases. We, even in the midst of our sorrow this morning, we praise God that Jesus is able to do that in the life of believers. And we, we praise him for the beautiful example that Ricky gave us of this. That as his body decreased, as he got older, as his breathing became more and more difficult, his soul increased. There's this inverse relationship. As his body decreased, his soul increased. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't always happen with me. I mean, when my body decreases, my soul decreases. <laughs> you know, I mean, if I'm hungry for more than an hour, I'm like, who can I punch, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> But, but, you know, this, this isn't what Jesus intends, right? He intends that as the body decreases, the soul increases. That's amazing. That happens in the life of a believer, and that happened in Ricky's life. We know that he was a man who stepped up and took care. He was a man who stepped up and took care. He took care of his wife. He took care of her children. He prayed the rosary every night with lit candles. Every night with blessed candles that he lit. His wife would be in the kitchen praying rosaries for one set of intentions. <laughs> he was in the other room praying rosaries for another set of intentions. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. This is what Jesus does in the life of believers. How he worked so hard. How he helped so many people. <coughs> How he was, he was a man content to be with his home, right? Didn't have to be running around, you know, here, there, here, there, here, there. He was a man who was at peace with his home, with his family, right? We need men like that in the world today. He would get up early every morning, make sure that the curling iron was plugged in for his wife, you know, make sure there was coffee ready, make sure different things were ready, make sure the car was warmed up. He did that for his wife for 26 years. She says that she never went to work 
for the cold car. Man, I'm getting kind of weepy just thinking about how awesome that is. Isn't that beautiful, you all? It's a very practical thing, very practical thing. It's not like he's not in the mission field and, you know, in the Congo or something. But, I mean, this is, this is as good. This is good. This is a mission, right? Very practical, but very good. Be simple. I mean, that's how saints are made. It's those day-to-day -day acts of charity, those very small acts of charity every day. They, they accumulate to, to make the soul better, right? How he was never self-centered, never self-centered. How he loved his, his kids and his grandkids. So these are things that happen in the life of believers and the life of someone who is connected with the faith of his baptism, who knows his faith, who knows his heritage. His mother taught him his faith and it stayed with him. His mother taught him his faith and it stayed with him. This is what can happen in the life of people like that, right? And it can still be true for us. That can be true for us too. If we stay connected to the faith of our baptism, we stay connected to our heritage, the faith that our elders pass on to us, we, all, we also can be this way. Jesus wants to work in you too. He wants to do these things in you too, in your life too. Finally, this uh, gospel reading I think is so beautiful. We have the crucifixion scene. Uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary is at the foot of the cross. The beloved Apostle John, St. John the Apostle, is there at the foot of the cross. And Jesus, hanging from the cross, from it, looks down to his mother and said, Woman, behold your son, John. Then he looks at John and says, Behold your mother. And then it says something very interesting. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So we know that practically that was the case, that John from that point took Mary into his literal home and cared for her for the rest of her days on earth. But what that also means is that he took her into everything that has to do with him. To take someone into your home means to take someone into your life. Take someone into your heart. Take someone into your soul. That's how he received the Blessed Virgin Mary. We know that Ricky had a special relationship with Mary, a special love for her, a special fondness for the Blessed Virgin Mary. He took her into his home. So our prayer for Ricky this morning is that Mary will in turn take him into her heavenly home. stand now for our petition. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. For Ricky, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, for our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the family and friends of our brother Ricky, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, 
that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free, them, free him, we pray, from all his sins, and make him a sharer in your redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare the altar. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Ricky, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Serve a thing. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Ricky, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. moment we will distribute communion to those Catholics who are properly disposed to receive communion. Be assured that you don't have to receive communion at every Mass that you attend. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For I am not worthy that you should enter under my but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Be stand.
be seated. Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey. Mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Ricky may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Ricky, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Ricky again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Let's pray for Ricky's family in this moment of silence.
into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ricky in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Ricky in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever, through Christ our Lord, amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. 